Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today marks an exciting occasion as we present a compelling summary for you. Our focus centers on delving into the insights provided by Catherine Gray in her book, The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober. For those enthusiasts who appreciate efficient learning strategies and aspire to maximize their educational experience, this summary promises to be a treat. Are you ready? Let's dive in. John Mulaney, a stand-up comedian, said on his new show that he had stopped drinking. And then he said, I don't know if anyone here is thinking about quitting drinking, but you need to know two things. In the first place, people who drink won't know what to give you if you stop drinking. People forget about everything else when they drink all night. At parties, they'll say, hey everyone, we have Coronas in the fridge and Mulaney. Would you like an old turnip we found in the cabinet? Does that benefit you? He jokes that if you quit drinking, you're about to lose the greatest excuse in your life, which is, I'm really sorry about last night, I was just too drunk. That is a get out of jail free card that you don't even realize you've had until you lose it. I can't say that anymore. I can never be like, sorry about last night, I was just so drunk. Now I have to be like, I'm really sorry about last night. It's just that I'm mean and loud. It probably will happen again. Now this makes for a pretty funny comedy routine, but that's because it's so true. Whether you live in the US or the UK, social drinking is a significant part of our culture. In fact, it's so common that you're considered weird if you don't drink. And as a result, many people feel pressured to drink, even when they dislike alcohol or when they suffer unpleasant side effects from alcohol. And that's exactly why the author wrote this book. Contrary to the pressure of public opinion, Alcohol isn't a requirement for being or having fun over the course of this summary. Catherine Gray's research will prove that being sober doesn't have to mean being somber. Chapter 1. Being Sober Curious NPR says that the sober curious trend started in the UK as a challenge for people who had too much fun over the New Year's holiday. It turned into dry January, dry July, and sober September where people challenged each other to live their lives without booze and shared what they learned. Last year, British researchers did another study that compared the health of men and women who didn't drink for one month to those who kept drinking. Aaron White, a senior scientific assistant at the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, wrote a report that carefully looked over the study's results. Despite minimal adjustments, Aaron White found that after one month, participants dropped weight had greater insulin sensitivity, blood pressure, and liver function. These studies illustrate that health improvements can significantly impact quality of life. Drinking can be fun, but it can also cause weight gain, skin, blood sugar, and teeth issues. Gray thinks being sober may be less pleasurable if you're physically reliant on alcohol. If you drink twice a day, you may be physically addicted. A popular mental health website warns that using alcohol to cope with depression or anxiety can worsen it when the alcohol is removed. Neurotransmitter GABA calms and delights. Alcohol boosts its benefits. It reduces glutamati, another powerful neurotransmitter. Lots of alcohol lowers GABA and glutamate levels, so you need more to achieve the same impact. The body produces more glutamate and less GABA to adapt. You can still feel hyperactive, frustrated or angry, restless and shaky after stopping drinking because your body creates too much glutamate and not enough GABA. Frequent drinkers may develop tremors, convulsions and high blood pressure. The author says these signals will fade quickly. Aaron White praised sober people in a recent conversation. Kathy Kuzniar dropped 30 pounds, felt more creative and calmer. Stephanie Fort also reported improved skin and eye health. She also felt better overall. Reducing stress would be nice. Chapter two, why hangovers are worse than you think. Many people have their own hangover remedies, such as ibuprofen and Sprite in bed, egg yolks, or 2 p.m. brunch. Dr. Gerald B. Lichen, North Shore University Health System Director of Medical Toxicology, addressed hangover effects and purpose in an interview with Vice. Alcohol oxidized to acetaldehyde, which is unpleasant. Acetaldehyde is more dangerous than alcohol, 
Too much can produce dysphoria, nauseousness, and headache, worsening sadness. A hangover occurs when your body absorbs too much alcohol and detoxifies from an overdose, which is quite hard on your liver. We may not fully understand how alcohol affects the liver, but sitcoms like NBC's Superstore and Brooklyn Nine-Nine routinely mention it. In a recent interview with a health journal, Southern California Liver Center director Dr. Tarak Hassanin discussed the catastrophic effects of alcohol on the liver. Eat this, not that? Dr. Hassanin explained that alcohol goes to your liver before all other parts of your body. While it's in your liver, your body metabolizes alcohol and it's broken down into toxic compounds, which are then distributed throughout the body. One reason you feel so bad after a night of drinking is that your liver is trying to share the burden with the rest of your body. But the more you drink, the harder it has to work. Tylenol and ibuprofen are both very bad for your liver. So even though you might want to take acetaminophen for your headache, you'll only hurt yourself more in the long run. When you consider long-term liver strain, sleep deprivation, and stomach inflammation, you can only conclude that not drinking is better for your health and hangovers aren't as harmless as we think. Chapter 3. Alcohol is a drug. Although we actively restrict children's access to drugs and criminalize substances like cocaine and ketamine, we continue to drink in nightclubs without question. The author suggests that this is because alcohol has been normalized. It would be surprising if popular TV shows or movies advocated for alcohol. The survey ranked the risk and addictiveness of various drugs from 0 to 100. Alcohol scored 72, beating heroin, 55, crack, 54, and methamphetamine, 33. So, as we can see from these results, alcohol is extremely dangerous even if our social perception of it doesn't take that danger into account. When we consider it in light of this social normalization, we have to realize that the biggest difference between alcohol and illegal drugs is our perception of it. For example, many heavy drinkers would never consider taking heroin because they fear it would be dangerous or addictive. Finally, comedian John Mulaney remarked that quitting drinking may change your social life. People may feel awkward around you and not know what to offer at a gathering. It's only because society has accepted unhealthy alcohol usage, the author says. Many people drink when they don't want to because they're frightened of looking strange, boring, or unfun, yet evidence reveals otherwise. If you enjoyed this summary like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Thanks for watching. Until next time, and happy learning.